uh, it's a nice foam box. I mean, you know. Ugh. Benchmark me. Well, I, I can't. I can't benchmark you because, uh, well, it's not time yet. Sh build? Yeah, we can do a build. There you go. Here's our build. I can't really show you anything else. Is he coming yet? Buy me. Buy me. Buy me. Three orders are good. Buy me. Well, there we are. The 9900 KS has launched. And we get the benchmarks. But first, our build. The NZXT H710i with the NZXT Z390 motherboard. Now, this build is an interesting build. It's a motherboard. I'm gonna do a full review of the motherboard at a later date. But, I mean, it's got the aesthetic. It's got the NZXT aesthetic. There's no denying that. Of course, I've got my neon banana. That's at least plus two to charisma for this case. I mean, come on. But the motherboard was a little bit fiddly in terms of memory. Now, I've been following NZXT for a while. They have actually put a lot of work into the BIOS, and I was glad to see that in terms of overclocking and overclocking potential and that sort of thing. That said, Intel has a utility for extreme overclocking, and in general, I think that works better and more safely with this type of overclocking. I was able to do a manual overclock on this CPU. I mean, normally we save the overclocking till the end, but this is the cool stuff. The 9900KS, the uh, clock wall seems to be at about 5.4 gigahertz. Now, I really doubt that anybody's gonna be able to achieve 5.4 gigahertz on all eight cores stable, at least not without liquid nitrogen. But it is worth noting that that 5.4 gigahertz wall is a little farther out than the previous clock walls that we saw in the 9900K and some other processors. I mean, like five gigahertz to 5.1 gigahertz with the 9900K and then the, you know, the 8086, the special edition of the six core 8600K. You know, that was five gigahertz on six cores, 5.1 gigahertz, 5.2 sort of was its clock wall, I think. So we are seeing a clock wall at about 5.4 gigahertz with the CPU. So I think it's a little more than bend silicon, at least if there are people walking around out there with the 9900K that can do 5.4 gigahertz on one or two cores at about 1.39 volts. Well, that would be surprising. I mean, I think that those are, uh, those have got to be incredibly rare CPUs. So I really do think Intel has tweaked the process a little bit with the 9900KS, and that may explain the lead time because this was announced at Computex in 2019. I was there, saw it, I saw the, you know, it's like the 9900KS. Maybe announced is not the right word. Maybe ruminations, or it's like there will be a response. And it's like, the critics were like, how? There's no process node. There's no way you're gonna get 10 nanometers, Intel's 10, 10 nanometer process up to five gigahertz. And that's certainly true if we look at the mobile parts. Now, I'm sure Intel is doing a lot of work in the background. Their, their engineers are working overtime. They may be accelerating some of the more advanced node processes, but this CPU in this build with our 280 millimeter all-in-one cooler, it's a Corsair 280 millimeter cooler. You're not gonna be doing 5.4 gigahertz on this cooler. The amount of cooling required um, it was pushing the limits of a 360 rad. And actually as the fluid heated up, I don't think it would have been sustainable because a 360 rad wasn't enough to remove the heat at 5.4 gigahertz, even on just a few cores. Five gigahertz on the 9900KS, not a problem. 5.1 gigahertz with this H115i, basically fine. It did need a negative AVX of minus two, but still, that's really, really impressive. 5.3, I might have been able to get 5.3, dialing it in a little bit more, but I would have needed uh, more cooling than the H115i. Probably a 360 millimeter radiator would do it, but 5.4 is right out. The fact that they didn't really raise the pricing, the MSRP, I think it's like $513 according to the, uh, the press release. So if retailers are selling the CPU for that, it's not really a price drop over the 9900K, but if you were going to pick between the 9900K and the 9900KS, certainly you should go for the KS depending on what your needs are, what you're looking for for your gaming experience. If you are gonna buy a 2080 Ti and you want the absolute maximum frame rate, set it and forget it, and you're gonna spend extra money on a, uh, on a really ridiculous add-in cooler, the 9900KS will deliver those frames. But if your budget is down to more money into the graphics card or more money into the CPU, for any reasonably modern CPU, you could put more money into your graphics card and there is quite a bit. I mean, the 2080 Ti is still a pricey, pricey card, but it delivers the performance. Maybe a 2080 Super, 
is more to your liking it. 900 KS is maybe even a little overkill for the 2080 Super, unless you're only gaming at like 1080p at ridiculous frame rates in a lot of games. 4K with the 2080 Ti for a lot of our testing, it's actually very good, surprisingly playable. The minimums were better, but let's take a look at the benchmarks. So first up we have Firestrike. It's an artificial benchmark, it's not the best, but hey, everybody benchmarks Firestrike, it gives you an idea of where you are in the lay of the land. 36,130 with the 9900KS and the 2080 Ti. That's a pretty good bump over the 9900K and the 2080 Super. Of course, that's a CPU and a GPU difference, the 9900K plus the 2080 Ti. It's about 33,599 versus 36,130, owing to out of the box clock differences. Switching gears a little bit, switching to the 5700 XT from AMD and adding into the mix some AMD CPUs. We've got the 9900KS scoring 26,597 in the Firestrike physics test. Of course, the 9900K is about 25,000 and the 3900X with its extra four core advantage is scoring 27,219. So it's just edging out the 9900KS, but an eight core processor versus a 12 core processor neck and neck in this particular benchmark, that's pretty interesting. Cinebench R20, Cinebench R20, I mean, it's a, it's a benchmark program. It scales really well to multiple cores. And here, of course, the 3900X from AMD being a 12 core processor, absolutely takes the lead, dominating all of the other processors. The 9900K scores a uh, pretty respectable score of 4,800, 4,879. The 3700X just edges that out though, but the 9900KS comes in clutch with 5,162 points in Cinebench R20. That is just a little faster than 3700X. Of course, the 3700X is only about 300 to 330, depending on where you are in the US and some other factors, sales, that kind of thing. But that, uh, that dollar gap there is pretty significant. As for specific games, well, the same story pretty much plays out across all the games. At resolutions like 4K, you're really depending more on the graphics card than the CPU. But Tom Clancy's Wildlands with the 2080 Ti Founders Edition, we're seeing 67 FPS from the 9900KS and about 65 FPS from the 3900X and about 64 FPS from the 3800X. This is really close to margin of error. It's just different enough with the 9900KS that I can say the 9900KS seems to have some advantage here, but this is pretty much, if you look at the other games that we've benchmarked, that's pretty much the same story playing out across all of the other benchmarks. The 9900KS, especially at lower resolutions, will pull ahead a little bit more, but as the resolution increases, the gap narrows, but with the extra clocks, the 9900KS does maintain a very slim lead over the other processors. That's maybe down to margin of error. SpecView Perf. SpecView Perf is a great benchmarking program for a uh, more sort of classical, like business use case type workloads. The 9900KS pulls out really well here. For this round of benchmarks, we only tested Intel CPUs, but the 9900KS plus the 2080Ti has a wider margin than I would have expected. So if you want to buy a processor and you don't want to fiddle with overclocks, but you want five gigahertz basically across the board, because you work on business applications and things like that, this might not be a bad choice. In particular, 3DS Max with the 2080 versus the 2080Ti plus the 9900KS shows a little bit more of a margin than I would have expected. It's about 5% in the former case and about 17% in the latter, but still, it's a pretty good result. Of course, on the business side of applications, the difference between the 9900K and the 9900KS for most business applications was not as much as one might have expected. You know, Showcase and Medical and Maya, basically margin of error performance again with the 9900KS, just, just barely eking out a win. So there you have it. I don't think there's too many surprises here. The 9900KS is a little faster than the 9900K, even when you're willing to overclock the 9900K to five gigahertz. Something I saw interesting in the Tom's hardware benchmarking was that it looked like the IPC regressed just a little bit in the 9900KS uh, so that you could get those higher clock bumps. It was very, very, very small. But in our testing for games and like real world workload, whatever difference there might be there doesn't seem to be measurable. It doesn't seem to bear out in the games, at least not within margin of error. In terms of like actually playing games on this, it was a pretty pleasurable experience. And there are some features of the, uh, the NZXT motherboard that I really like because I'm not really like super into RGB gaming and it's sort of understated. I mean, it's got the RGB and I've got the, I've got the banana in there, but if I were using this for real, I'm probably going to put the side on it and just kind of forget about it. The back panel has a diagnostic readout like diagnostic codes. 
it's pretty great. You also got power and reset back there, also pretty great. Overall, this build held up pretty well. Uh, I like the case. The case has good airflow. It's pretty well designed. Mostly, I did the testing with the sides off, so maybe it had the chance to be uh, a little bit more ventilated than it would, you know, beside of your desk. But yeah, the 9900KS, it generates a lot of heat. Be prepared for that for uh, if you're gonna do the overclocking and you're gonna do some stuff with that. Even at stock temperatures, you're gonna need a really, a really pretty nuts cooler. It may be worth revisiting with tower coolers, like really high performance tower coolers um, at some point in the future. But overall, the 9900KS, pretty much everybody I think should be able to attain 5.1 gigahertz on at least a few cores. If you use the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, you probably could get 5.2 gigahertz on a few cores, drop that down to five gigahertz when more of your cores get loaded, or maybe 4.9 if you're really unlucky and everything is like super loaded. If you really wanna dial it in and get as much performance out of the processor as you can, and you should do that with a $500 processor, then that is gonna be the way that I would recommend that you do it. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been the 9900KS. Some surprising stuff. I'm really surprised about that 5.4 gigahertz overclocking wall. I think pro overclockers are gonna have a lot of fun with that. But overall, yeah, I think it's pretty much what we expected. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out and I'll see you in the forums.